This week's parsha is the mitzvah of Afrosha's challah. The mitzvah of taking off challah from a dough. You have a dough, see what size it is, and you have to take off a piece of challah. And in the times when the kehanim were tar, you would take the challah and give it to the koyin. It's like truma. You have truma on certain foods. Truma is maestris on a dough, on a isa, as it's called in the Torah, on a dough, there's a different type of truma that you give, which is called chala. That chala you give to the coin. You take over part and you give it to the coin. It has a lot of similarities to truma, but it's only on dough. Only on something that you make a, a dough out of it. It's the one thing you don't eat on Shabbos. It's chala. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Yeah, why it's called chala. So you, uh, so you take off a piece of the dough and you give it to the koyin. Now in the mitzvah of challah, I saw a very interesting Hagoyz Maimonides. And he says, you know, we don't, we're not here to uh, evaluate mitzvahs, which mitzvahs are more important. But he, he has a remez. He says, and trying to stress the importance of the mitzvah of challah. And he says, the gematria of Zuhi, Mitzvah hachala. This is the mitzvah of chala. Is the exact gematria of taryag. Hmm. Taryag. Trying to stress that chala is equal shava keneged taryag mitzvahs. Just so you should know how important the mitzvah of chala is. So, and Allah has brought down that milcha shabbos, famous minute. The more brings it down. In the beginning of Hilcha Shabbos, Noyagin Lalosh Kudesh Shir Chala. The bias, the minig was, the minig still is, that a person, a lady, should make the Shir Chala. We'll get to that in a second what it means. Lasses Mahem Lachamim, to make from it bread, the Vtsoya Lehem Bashabbos, to eat from it on Shabbos Vyamtif, for who me covered Shabbos Vyamtif, this is covered Shabbos Vyamtif, and the Shabbos. And a person should not change. That's the more brings down Allah. The meaning was that a lady made a dough big enough to have the shir chala for covered Shabbos for Yamtif. But in the Shabbos, the person shouldn't change, you should keep to that meaning. But what does it mean? What does it mean, first of all, the shir chala? A lady should make the shir chala. The shir chala is, the Pasuk says, Kader Yisaseichem, which was an Isa of the Midbar, which was an Oymer. How much is an oimer? The more brings down is a series of eifa, which is ha. Huh? Chumash says that. Chumash says that, yeah. But how much is it? Practically. <laughs> how much is it practically? Five pounds. How much is it practically a, a series of eifa? The sheer chala. So the more says it is forty-three and a fifth bayim. The size of forty-three and a fifth eggs, a flour. We're not talking about the dough after it's done. The sheikh is dependent on how much flour you're using. Not on the dough after you add the water after it rises. How much flour you're using is 43 and a fifth bayim. After it rises? No, no, no. The, the, the flour. The flour itself. Flour has to be 43 and a, and a fifth bayim. That is the shear of a dough. From there, you have to take off challah. So if you make cups, less than that... How many cups is that? Before? Oh, we'll get to the exact measurements in a second. If you make less than that... Weight. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Volume, not Volume. We'll see in a second how much what it is exactly. So if, if you make anything less than that, then there's no chiv to take off challah. The question how much is that? First of all, to remember this year, challah, the word challah is gematria 43. That's the, the remez that to remember is 43. Bayim, challah is 43. The extra five, fifth, you have to remember. But challah is gematria 43. 43 bayim is the shear of a dough that from there you have to take off challah. How much is it practically today? So this big machlok is about it. The shear of the famous between Chazanish and Chaim Noah, exactly how much the shear is. 1.2 kilo of flour, which is around 2.5 pounds of flour, is when you start getting into the questionable um, amount. There is still around 2.5 pounds, 1.2 kilo then there's no question. They make a dough which is pretty small. So as a big challah in the house, usually making more than two and a half pounds. If you make a flour, 
So if you make, let's say, two pounds of flour, no question, you don't take off any challah, it's potter from challah. If you make more than that, so then, then everybody gets into the question, when is a for sure chi of challah? And the only difference is going to be, do you make a bracha on it or not? If you want to get into the questionable amount, you have to take off challah. But you may not make a bracha on it. So once you get past two and a half pounds, 1.2 kilo, you'll take off. Then the raise of Achleg is when you start making a bracha. Is it 1.6 kilo or is it 2.2 kilo? 2.2 kilos is around 5 pounds. So that's where the number 5 pounds comes from, because that's according to Chazim Nishashir, that with 5 pounds, everyone agrees you're ready, you will have to make a bracha on it. So if in between 2 and a half to 5 pounds, you have, it's questionable whether you make a bracha on it or not, but after you have 5 pounds, everyone agrees you're ready to make a bracha. That is the amount of flour you have to have to have the shir challah in order to be required to take off challah from it. Make a bracha. To make a bracha. So the Allah has brought out that the meaning was that people will make challah Erev Shabbos, <coughs> the shir of challah. So if you want to be yoyed to that, you should make the shir. Five pounds is the shir challah. Or misafik, you can make two and a half pounds. Then already you take off challah misafik. The question is, what's, where does this meaning come from? What's up shot in this minute to make challah Erev Shabbos? So the Ramah says, For whom we cover Shabbos? It's covered Shabbos to have fresh bread for Shabbos. To have fresh bread for Shabbos is covered Shabbos. But it's brought down another reason for the minute. So the Mishnah Brew brings it down already. Besides the fact that it's covered Shabbos to make it, if it's only that's covered Shabbos for Yom Tif, then you can make anything. There's another reason. But Afka to be able to be Mikhaim the mitzvah of Chala on Erev Shabbos. Why? The fish Ibda as Adam Marishain Shahaya Khalasa Shal Oilam. Adam Marisha was called the Chala of the world, who's taken off from the creation of the world, set aside the person, he's called Chalasa Shalaylam. Chava destroyed him, so to say, on Erev Shabbos, when she gave him from the and and then um, he, he was sent out of Ganadin. So here's another reason brought down what the meaning is to make Chal Erev Shabbos. Is it because Kavit Shabbos or is it because she, uh, uh, Chava was Ma'abed, Adam Arishan, who was the Chalosa Shalaylam? To be mistaken that she's Mekayim, the mitzvah of Chal Erev Shabbos. So the men shouldn't sure make Right. So according to this, it's a mitzvah for the ladies. Okay. It's not a mitzvah for the men. According to the first reason, it's a mitzvah for the men also. That's Kavit Shabbos. That's Kavit Shabbos, a mitzvah for the men also. Another this, difference would be... Just taking this shear, <clears throat> taking a challah, anytime you make this much flour, you yeah. take challah. Anytime make it on you make Tuesday, it, you would even take it. Anytime you, make, uh, you have a dough that's made out of five, two and a half pounds of flour, okay. you take off challah already. <clears throat> Is that regardless of what type of flour? Is it wheat only or barley, rice, oats? No, only, f- only five million. Only five million. Only five million. The wheat, barley, oats, oats rye, 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 and uh, spelt. Those so five million. You're supposed to burn it? After you take it off, you're supposed to burn it, yeah. You take it off. Today, you take it off, the client can't eat it anyway. Because the client is tummy. So what you do is you take it and we burn it. But another half would be what the reason is, is Erev Yom Tif. Is there a mitzvah to make, is there a minute, a mitzvah, a minute to make Chava Erev Yom Tif? If the whole reason is because Chava was Ma'abed Chalas HaShalaylam, that happened on Erev Shabbos. It didn't happen on Erev Yom Tif. So then, Erev Yom Tif, the mitzvah would be, the minute would be to make yeah. maybe fresh bread, fresh Chava, but not to have the mitzvah of fresh Chava. It's a big difference. 
But if, if you're making it a covered Shabbos, you make it a covered Yom. Yeah, so if it has covered Shabbos and covered Yom, if you're right. right. But there's another reason because of if the Chal right. Shalayim. So it's two, it's two differences. One if every Yom Tif. Another difference is should you Dafka make the shear amount they have to take off Chal from it? If, the, if it's only that's covered, you don't have to make that much. So the dilemma comes up, like a lot of people, I think my wife, a lot of women, they make a lot. So you can make a brach of it. Right. According to this, you should have fresh, you shouldn't do that. Why? Because they freeze it, you mean? You have yeah. Food, yeah, yeah, so that's, that's, another, that's another difference. That's another difference. People, of some people, you have two people in the household, right? Yeah, you're you make a lot, you're not going to eat it. So you make so much challah on them, what are you going to do with it? Right, right. right. So do you have to it, cook it that day? No, you can freeze it. Portion of it, right? Yeah, you can freeze it. You can freeze it raw. You can freeze it all raw. Yeah. But but um, but then the next week you won't be but the next week you won't be taking challah from right. it. You right. take challah from that's it. Right. You do it. That's right. Yeah. So so a, some people say so. Eat. That's the question. So if it's for covered Shabbos, right. you put it in the freezer and you take it out the next week, yeah. it's just as fresh, just yeah, as good, right. just as fine. Let's say today. Three days, it's called fresh. You take it, you make it, you put it in the freezer, put it out the next week. Yeah, but by doing this separate week, every week you have, you're doing the covered shoppers. If you do it once, it lasts you six weeks. That's no, so, so that's the question. Is the covered shoppers then making it, or is the covered shoppers having it? Or making it for that shoppers. No, so covered right. shoppers, you should have fresh challah for shoppers. Uh -huh. You want to be able to kind of covered shoppers for that shoppers? Do something else. Uh -huh. You can make kugel for that shoppers. Who does he have to make the challah for that shoppers? So the covered Shabbos it was, you should have fresh bread to Shabbos. They didn't have fresh bread every day those days. So they wanted to make sure you have fresh bread for Shabbos. Make sure the covered Shabbos to have fresh bread. Does the intention have to be only to, for bread? But what I mean is you could use five pounds of flour to make pasta or five pounds of flour to make a cake batter. Um. Right, right. So the question is what you're using for the, 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 to, to, You have to have an Isa. You have to have an Isa dough and orti mechayev chama. So the batter would not be... If you're making a, a cake... If you're making a batter, pounds. believe the rock of it. So if it's a batter, you won't take off challah. If it's... Even though you take five pounds of flour. But if you're making a cockroach cake, which is a common mistake. People don't know that. If you're making a cockroach cake, you make a dough, and then you add the chocolate to the have a cinnamon to it, you make a with Right. You have to take off challah. It's a cake. Doesn't make a difference. It's well, that is a pastry cake to yeah. dough. Anything that's a dough, a pastry cake also. Anything that's a dough is mechuyiv and challah. Anytime you make a dough, even if it's going to be a cake, there's a chiyiv to take off challah from it. If you're making a cake of a little rock, meaning it's not a dough, it's, it's, it's a wet batter, liquid batter, you're not mechuyiv to take off challah. But if it's a dry batter, if it's a, a dough, especially the ones you put yeast into, it's a regular challah dough. It's a pizza too, like a pizza. Pizza, pizza, pizza yeah, pizza is mechuyiv to take off challah, yeah. You have to take a challah. Pasta would be like that too. Pasta is a uh, dough like that. Yeah. yeah. Before they make ha the pasta. Yeah. Pasta is more blue than rock, you know? Yeah. Put it through a machine. It, it's solid. Like, it's like a dough. Like so. yeah, you feed it with the machine. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like a, it's like a pocket dough. Yeah, it's like a pizza dough. Yeah, I think it's half the number. So, if, you, you know, you when it's a place that doesn't take a challah, you let me eat the pizza? You take it yourself. Take it yourself. Take it yourself, challah. Yeah. So, so with pasta. It's cooked. Hmm. Doesn't make a difference. We'll see, even, even though even though if you didn't take of challah when it was a dough, you have to take of challah afterwards. Right. Does the dough have to be baked? So, for example, with pasta, you're, doesn't you're, have to be baked. No, you you you're supposed, you're supposed you to take off. Like you no, take the dough, you put it, put it together. You make a dough out of it first. Right. That's the question. And then you have to take challah yeah. from that. Yeah. Put it through it. the machine, boil your pasta, but you'd have to burn the piece of dough. That yeah. Yeah. So you get a piece of you get a piece and you have to tear part of it off and burn it. If if the person is chasher, they don't take of chal. Yeah, you have to take a piece of bread. Yeah. Only oh, chutz or You can't take it off. In Eretz Yisrael. Also, you could. Yeah, don't think so. Why not? Is it, uh, I think here it's rabbinic and there it's the rice. It's a question of the rice. Even the rice today, so you have, you have to take a piece of chal. No, I don't think you can eat it. No, you can't eat it. I'm saying you have to burn it. Take it off. And burn. No, no. What I'm saying is, that a pizza in Eretz Israel that doesn't have chal taken yeah. off. Yeah. I don't think you can take off after it's cooked. Yeah, yeah. Ch chal after. If you don't think of chal before it's baked, you have to take it off after it's baked. The only chal the chutzlar. Sure no, the only chal the chutzlar in Eretz Israel is that the chutzlar. You have to eat it and then take, and then be mafus chal later on if you want. In Eretz Israel, with the rice, you have to be mafus chal first and then eat. Okay. That's the difference. Oh, okay. Okay. But if you have, if, if there's a bakery, a pizza bakery, you have a pizza shop, it's kosher, not taking off challah. You have to bake off a piece. Is taking off challah part of a hashgacha? 
So, so <laughs> it's, very, it's, very, yeah, it's a very interesting it's question. question. Most of the, uh, everybody almost does. Even yeah. the... Almost. Uh, <laughs> almost Barakas, every, almost all the Barakas companies, they take my fish as hard. Sometimes. Yeah. Barakas, you know the... the, the yeah, yeah, all yeah, of them. The Barakas, have, they have to take a yeah. from it. Because so that's a dough, that's a real dough. The stock, you know, there is a there is a mixture of some Akshayim. Not the C.O.R., I think C.O.R. was some Akshayim. They give Akshayim that the food is kosher. It's kosher. Hafresh Tzchala, we're not taking responsibility for it. Yeah, that would be the cookies. And yeah, else. cookies and stuff like that. Well, it's a blue, sure. Cookies is just a blue sure it's not. But if it's cakes, if it's cakes and pastries, then it's a problem. You have to take off. I saw recently one of the Achreinim, uh, uh, very busy screaming out against it. It's a big mixture today for people that they, um, they, they think that challah needs to be taken off, but a bread needs challah to be taken off. But they don't realize that it's not just bread. It's anything that's a dough. So how much do you have a cookie? How much would you take off? So how much do you have to take off? So the truth is, Me'ikir Hadin, if you take off a drop, it's enough. Me'ikir Hadin... It comes off and it crumbles. Every cookie you take off. No, so you can be misarifam. I want to get to all this. We'll see if we get to all today. You can be misarifit. Let's say you went ahead and you took a dough, and you don't have a share of chal, right? The dough is too small. You made, you made one pound of dough, of, of, of uh, challah, another pound of challah, and then afterwards, you take them all out of the oven, and you put them together in a basket. The Morris says, Mitzar from Basal, you put them in the basket afterwards, now comes a chi of challah. Now you have to take challah off of the dough, off of the bread. Which, when does this happen? When do we do that? Is it all from the same dough originally? No. You have ten different doughs. You make one dough, ten different doughs. You made one at two o'clock, you made one the next day, and one the next day. But then all the chalas end up together in one basket. Now comes a chiv chala, right now. If you have the sheer chala, let's say five pounds of flour, ends up together baked in the basket, now the Gemara says, that's Salam Asarifam. And none of them were made from a shir chal originally. None of them were made from a shir chal originally. And when they have this? Bakery would have a problem. No, bakeries make huge, huge yeah. doughs. You have, the, you have this issue by matzah. When they bake matzah, they'll never make a dough that's big enough for a shir chal. You're right. The doughs are all small doughs. They make one dough, they send it out, they cut it up, they roll it, they bake it, the next dough comes out. There's no chir chal. There's no chiv challah when it's a dough. When is it the, the original thing that the guy makes? Not a shir challah. With the water in the... It's not a shir challah. It's not? No, no. they keep them small. It's too big, they can't handle it. Yeah. It's, right. it's too small. They don't have time to do it. Yeah, yeah. it's not a shir challah. But at the end, when, when you would do after the 18 minutes, then they take challah. So th- yeah. why do they do that for? Because that's when, after it's baked, yeah. they put it all it's into this big basket. Big so thing. now it's mitzar from basal. Now comes the chiv challah. Now comes the That's why I take off a piece. I take off some for challah. And they say something. Say a bracha or something. Say a bracha. So, say a bracha. Of course, yeah. So this is a problem when you buy something that is not pas Yisrael for sure. Mm-hmm. It's not pas Yisrael. Yeah. It's not pas Yisrael. The probably there's no. You have to assume nobody took off. Yeah. 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 So there's no challah. So it depends. If it's a blue little rock, if it's like a cookie or something, you're okay. But if it's a, a pastry, then you have to you have to take a piece of challah. Take a little piece, even a small piece. So take you, if, you buy, like if you buy a loaf of bread that says OU on the side, right? It's not pas Yisrael. You have to assume that Chal was not taken. I don't know, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, all, all the companies. companies. Package of cookies. Are all those companies. Nice. What, what about that? Like uh, the white company. But, uh, but they don't true. take off Chal. That's 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 true. True. None of them they take. Yeah, they don't take. So yeah. you have to take off Chal. You have to take off Chal. It's not a big deal. And you take it off, you say nothing, right? So uh-huh. then, so then you have to know. Yeah. If, <laughs> no, I'll tell you why. You have to know what happened. You know this. You know. No, I'll tell you why. Because if it's a big, if it's if, if original was a big dough and there's a chi of chala, yeah. so then you're going to take it off. And with a bracha. With a bracha. But you don't know for sure. You don't know exactly what happened. Right. So if you're not sure, you won't make a bracha. You just take it off. So, but if you're not sure, so a bracha. So like, take off a small the piece. Can you throw the garbage? So what do you do with the chala today? When you take a chala from a piece of dough, yeah. what do you do with it? You could really throw it into the garbage. Since it can't be eaten, we don't. It's covered. We burn it. Burn it. We burn it. Most of the people take the challah. What do you do with the challah? There's two choices. Either you take the challah. A lot of people save it up till Pesach, and then they put they put it in the, in the beer chametz. Yeah. 
A lot of people do that. Yeah, yeah we fold the flies and everything else. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> but there's some people, which we do in my house, we take it and put it in stove oil, yeah. and I put it in the oven, yeah. and it burns. If it gets burned, it's not right, like, then you throw it out. Then you throw it out. So if you if you have an issue... Have a cookie. So, yeah, so if you have an issue, if you no, so a cookie you're not gonna take a challah. A cookie is a believe in raka. Let's say it's a it's a cake, okay. a pastry, Danish. a Danish. Let's say that has or, or bread that has an OU on it. Then you're not gonna take off challah. So take off a small piece. Yeah. We'll see how much we do take off. But you could take off a small piece, put it in a bag. Say this is challah. The mitzvah is challah. Take it off. Put it in a bag. I throw it in the garbage if you want. You could do that. Sound like a chili, chili should burn it, yeah, but if. What's the second choice? I don't do that. Yeah, but if, but if, 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 there's no, if you're talking, you know there's no fresh schal, then it's, it's a problem. It it what is there? So now it's Nisid It's Chalas Chutzlar, it's only Nisid Rabbonon. The answer is all, it could be the rice. It's a Machoy Kushan, it's the rice today or not. You throw in the garbage or you flush it? Anyone. Either one. Either one. Either one. You have to verbally declare this is designated as challah. You should say this is challah, yeah. So maybe, now I'm being maybe, maybe. You guys don't make sure. Right. Maybe yeah. it's not, right? Yeah. You think we're suffering, yeah. So suffer you're throwing the garbage, you're not worried about animals eating it or something like that. No, no. That's, that's if, you, if you know that, then take off challah. For even super great, take off challah now. So how much challah do you take off? No, so in halacha is, you could take off a drop. You have a huge dough. With a ricer, with a ricer, a small piece, is already enough for challah. Same with shrumo. You have a huge thing of of of, of uh, wheat. You take a chita achas b'teres sekri. A small thing is enough to patter. That's all when you have medirais or drop is enough. The minig the, 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 the Mishnah says that depends on nach time or balabayas. A nach time takes off a baker takes off one out of forty eight, and a balabayas takes off one out of twenty four. Question is where the difference comes from. But the Mishnah says, if someone's a baker, you take off a 48th of the dough, 1 48th, that's how much you take off a challah. And if you're a person baking in your house, take off 1 24th. And the 24th is because usually when you're baking in your house, you bake less. You have to take off enough of a piece that you have Kadei Nisina, is a Lashon HaMishnah. What? 1 24th is quite a bit. 1 24th is quite a bit, yeah. 1 24th is quite a bit, it's not just a small piece. But, to my answer, since today, anyway, we don't give it to the Kayan. And we're burning it anyway. So therefore, the Ramos says, today, we take off a kezayis. Take off a kezayis, no matter how big the dough is. Take off a kezayis, small piece, size of a kezayis, and that's the challah for the dough. Now, in the case where you take off challah because you're not sure, like in the case you had before, then take off even a mashu is enough. So every person that eats a cookie has to do it. In other words... No, okay, then, then you're enough for a mashu. So the most says, yeah, mushroom. Like you have a box of cookies. Let's owe some cookies. So every person that's going to eat a cookie has to take. No, so you, before you open the box, take off a little piece. Say this is challah. Finish the whole box. Because yeah. why? Because the salam and yeah. okay. They're in the box. The box has been of them. Okay. So now the whole box of cookies. You can take off challah from, from the the whole box. Did but cookies you're not going to have to. You do, you cookies you don't have to. Cookies yeah. is believe the believe the rock usually. Oh. Only believe the av you have to take off my skin. You have to take off truma, a challah, I mean. A, a thick dough. For example, a, a cake, a cockish cake. It's a thick dough, usually. Uh, 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 Barakas, these things are, are a regular dough. They're not, it's a blue rock and meat, something you pour. When you make a cookie batter, you can pour it, usually. So you're saying we get some from a bakery here in Toronto. You have to assume they didn't take it no, off. No, we get to the bakery in Toronto, the COR. Bakery, there's, yeah. there's, there's this chow taken off it. But, a package you, but, but if you buy a packaged product with an OU on it. It's Wonder Bread. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> You'd have to take off. Yeah, you have to take off a piece of chow. Because if you know for sure, no chow is taken off. You have to find a tax shaving. Every hex is different. You have to check into the Akshayim. I know that in the States there are plenty of Akshayim that they, in, especially in the, you know, the out-of-town cities where there's not much kosher food there, and they they barely convince the owners of the bakery to keep kosher, then a first they don't take the Akshayim for. They take the Akshayim that the food is kosher. More than that, you're on your own. But here, I think most of the, I think COR is, one of the products is, much. is, is, is <laughs> a first schal. Except so the even if they go to them, except cookies not, don't have uh, to. Except uh, you know, the, the other companies. Cookies don't have to. No, like uh, 
companies such as, let's say, are, are compliment. I just saw that cupcakes. Right. None of them, I'm sure, they, they didn't take them. They don't take off high down. Even if they have a COR. Yeah. Yeah. It's the ingredients and. Uh, you have to find. The, I don't know the what the Matzias is over. You have to find it out. Okay, so that is so. Er Shabbos is the midst of taking of chal. It's interesting. The Eishel Avram. Manufactured on Saturdays. Oh, also, yeah. Well, they could do whatever they want. Yeah. Yeah. But those go, go those go same us. companies are manufacturing yeah. products on Shabbos as well. Yeah, it doesn't make a difference right. to you. Yeah, that's right. our problem. It's a great mm-hmm. company. It make a difference. Yeah. It's a kosher boy. That's why it's better. It's a kosher boy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's why it's better to keep past the straw. That's the that's the what? That's why it's better to keep past the straw. So so one second. So that so we got a little uh, off sidetracked here a little bit. We call the first schal here. So so let's get it back to erev Shabbos. Getting back to erev Shabbos is supposed to make chalas the sheer chal the amount of chal, and if you if it's your only two people in the family. Kids are married off or don't have kids yet, you're not making that much challah. You can still make the shir challah, freeze the rest, take it out next week, you have a fresh challah. The the Eishel Avram, in the back of the Shulchan Aruch, the so called Eishel Avram, not the Premier Garden, it's a different Eishel Avram, the Machucha Rav, and he said it's a very interesting thing. Why we have bread a whole week? On, ch- on Shabbos, what do we eat? Chala. We eat challah. Where does the name challah come from? Whole week we eat bread, and Shabbos we eat challah. <coughs> Where does the name challah come from? It looks like a challah. It, look, it looks like a challah, but it looks like a, what is challah? <laughs> now the truth is, the name challah is something you shouldn't be eating. Because yeah. challah we don't eat. Mm-hmm. Right, take off challah, you don't eat. So why are we calling it challah for? And whole week we eat bread, and Shabbos we eat challah. It's why? the consciousness of the sanctity. That's a Jewish name to it. Okay. <laughs> okay. It so, makes it something special. Okay, so, so the Bishoshirov says that... The reason why we call it challah is, is because the, um, we want to show that we made this Erev Shabbos to be Mechaim, the mitzvah of challah. That's why it, we got it the name of challah. And it's interesting, the, the, the brought in Allah, the Gemara says, Erev Shabbos, Ben Hashemoshes, a person has to tell his, his wife or his family, Esartem, he took off Maestris, Araftem, did they make an Erev? Vedlikos and Eris, did they light the candles? Those are three things a person has to say in his house, Erev Shabbos, Ben Hashemoshes. The more, a Mishnah and Shabbos. And Shukhanah and Tur is brought down, the, the Rechava brings it down also, that there's a different gear that we have today. What do we say? We say, Isaitem, Iraftem, Kifrishu Chalo, Vedliko Senevis. Look in the, in the Rechava and it's in Reish Samach. She is some of the Hashaycha, Isla and Shabesa, Lashraka, Isartem, Eraftem, Hefrashta and Chala. You take off Chala. Now, this came from the Mishayim. The moral is no, you don't see this at all. So it says, so today, we have to tell this, we don't, we, not, we don't do this. It says in the Machaber. You don't say about going to the family members, Erev Shabbos, Beres Marshas, Isartem, Eraftem, Hedlikos and Eris. We don't do it anymore. Hefrashta and Chala, we don't do it anymore. The question is, why not? What happened? The wife was shooting, that's why. Yeah, if you ask any questions. <laughs> <laughs> but... Now you ask me. Ask me later. <laughs> <laughs> so... It, it, Don't worry the whole day. <laughs> so it's... It, no, but not that you make the challah. You take off challah. We're mafra challah. Maybe if you got to take off challah. Maybe if you got to take off challah. So he says, today that we call our challah, challah, that itself is a reminder. <laughs> That itself is a reminder to take off challah. The truth is today... Every woman knows what to do. Yeah, everybody knows what to do. Yeah. She wants you to. Know, it also depends on how you think about what you're eating on, on Friday night. Are you thinking that you're eating, that you took off the challah and you're eating the bread? Or are you thinking you're eating what's left after you took it off? That's the connection to it, right? Okay. And I think that's why you call it a challah. That's why you call it a challah. It's what's yeah, left yeah. after. Yeah, it's interesting, yeah. You know. Whichever way you look at it, it's that we call it challah. It's called challah. He, he, he equates it to this mitzvah of making the challah Erev Shabbos. So if you didn't, then clearly you can't do it on Shabbos. That's a question. Can you we, eat the bread? So that's a question. If you didn't take off challah on Erev Shabbos, what do you do? Can you take it off on Shabbos or not? That's a big shot on the price game. Separation. And, and the truth is, this, this halach is not brought down in Hilchah Shabbos. This halach is brought down in Hilchah Pesach. Why? Because usually, when people make dough, they're married to take off challah. So when you're making matzah, and you don't take it off when it's dough, you have to remember to take it off afterwards. That's what people start forgetting yeah. to take off afterwards. 
So it depends. If it's chutzlar, it's more lenient. If it's that so, it's more chomerdik. You have to go through the over there exactly what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do on Shabbos. In the chutzlar, you're allowed to eat it and take off chava after Shabbos. Would it be more lenient on Pesach rather than Shabbos? No, probably not. Huh? Oh, boring. Not boring, it's sakin. Tikkun. It's tikkun. If, 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 are you allowed to take off chuas masses on Shabbos? The reason why you're not allowed is because you, you, you're fixing the dough. Uh-huh. Fixing the dough. Uh-huh. Yeah. There's a lot more to speak about. Running out of time, I just can't hold myself back from, from connecting today's daf, today's daf to challah. Whoever's learned today's daf, uh-huh. whoever's doing daf yemi, in daf yemi, in today's daf, there's a halacha, eruv chetzeris. People make an eruv. How do you make an eruv? Everybody comes together and they bring their bread into a basket, right? And that's a eruv chetzeris. You put it in one person's house. That's called an Eruv. Now, the Gemara says, there's one sheet in the Gemara that holds, the blood that holds, everybody has to give a Sholem, a full Chal. Why? Because of Meshav Eva, the Gemara says, because if one person is going to give half a Chal, a little piece of Chal, and one person give a nice Chal, and then they say, oh, I have to give good stuff, and you're giving garbage, right? So therefore, he says, everyone has to give a nice Chal, a full Chal, a Prusa Shleim, a full Chal. Now, the question is, I have a bunch of challahs in my house, but I forgot to take off challah when I made the dough. So now, after I made the dough, I'm going to pull off a piece of the challah, and that's going to be my my challah. Let's call it a piece of the bread. That will be my challah. And now I want to use that that bread, that challah, leftovers, for the Ruvah Chateris. Could I use it? It's not whole. Bro. It's not whole. It's not whole. It's not whole. It doesn't look nice. Yeah, it's not whole, so you can't use it. So the Gemara says you could use it. Why? Because the fact that it's missing is not a chesar and it's a milo. Because you took it off to fix it. You took off the piece. Why? To make it better. Because it was also torn out and now it becomes mutter. Such a prusa, such a bread that's not fully ho- not whole, you could use that for ruvah chesaris. That's what the Gemara says. You take off four chala, it's not, it's not a chesar in it, it's a milo. It's a milo. You took off a piece for the mitzvah of chala. So the Chacham Tzvi says, Hu Adin, Lacha Mishnah Shabbos. The Lach of Lacha Mishnah Shabbos is that you have to have full breads. So let's say I made challah, I forgot to take off a piece of challah from the challah. So, but you can't use it as you can use it. So now, can I use it for Lacha Mishnah? Can I use that challah that broke off a piece for Lacha Mishnah? You have to have a shalom. So it's actually a shalom. Says the Chacham Tzvi, arrive from this Gemara, that it's called Shalim. Because if you took it off because of, of the Mitzvah Chal, it's okay. So usually you don't have the question. But on Pesach, if you have a Matzah that they broke off a piece, and you want to use it for Lechem Mishnah, you, you can use it for Lechem Mishnah, according to the Chacham Tzvi. That's what the Chacham Tzvi says. Now I want to add one thing. The Gemara says, if the it, next If line, the piece is broken, you can do it with that logic, or if you broke it? No, you took okay. off Chalo. You took if you off. did. No, yeah, you took okay. off Chalo. Yeah, yeah, not every piece that's broken you can okay. use. <laughs> no, 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 it has to be you took it off for Chalo. Okay. The piece that's missing was a piece that was meant for Chalo. Okay. Now, the, the next line the Gemara says that if you have a bread that broke in half, so now you can't use it for a Ruvah Chateris. So how about Tofra Bekis, something Gemara says. You put it together with a peg, with a piece of wood, a toothpick. toothpick. And as you take two pieces of challah, you put a toothpick through it, and now it's whole. Could you use that for a Ruvah Says the Gemara, you could. As long as you can't tell that it was, that it was cut in half. Says the Gemara, you could use it for a Ruvah It's called a Shalom. Now my question is, the Chacham Tzvi says that if you, if you break up a piece for challah, it's called a Shalom. By a Ruvah Chetzeris, it says the same thing applies to Shabbos, the Negeya, Lechem Mishnah. Could we take the next Gemara also and say, the Gemara says you put a toothpick through it and it's whole, it's good for Ruvah Chetzeris. Could we use that for Lechem Mishnah also or not? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Try it with Matzah. <laughs> yeah, Matzi, take, take some tape maybe. I don't know what you're going to do, but... Uh, sometimes you come and they've sliced up the bill because you don't have a full one. Right, so you want to put them together and... So, uh, no, you say take a toothpick from the herring or from the herring. Yeah, and put, put it together. Put it through. Yeah, they have... A, the, so there you could usually tell. So the truth of the matter is, that those, those bagels, it's not completely cut. It's like 90% cut. Right. And you're lucky <laughs> you can hold it up and it doesn't fall down. No. It's considered... No, not, yeah. not for Lecha Mishnah. Yeah, just don't 
Nafalacha Mishnah. I didn't say that. Was it called? No, Nafalacha Mishnah. Oh, what? Really? No. That's only for the halacha. We make a bracha. You're supposed to make a bracha on the shalim. Yeah, I understand. And that we say, but they have a problem. Yeah. You make a bracha on the shalim, but when you cut it, <laughs> it's, it, no, it's a hefsek. Oh. You have a, you're supposed to make you have a whole bagel in front of you, right? You're supposed to make a bracha on the shalim. But the problem is, it's a hefsek. You make a bracha, and then you cut it. The cutting it's a hefsek. So Allah says you cut it most of the way. That if you hold it, it doesn't break off. It's still cold enough shalim, and then you make the bracha. Then you bake the rest. That's only during the week. On Shabbos, we don't do that. On Shabbos, it has to be shalim, full. If it's cut halfway, it's That's not called shalim. What if it's like you have a challah and it's very warm and, and starts breaking up? That's not called shalim. So you're saying if you hold it up and it doesn't fall down, no, it's a, you know, if you hold it up yeah. and it's not cut at all, fine, but if it's cut. No, not cut. Let's not, not see it's broken. It's broken, it's a problem. You hold it I mean, and it doesn't. It's doesn't, not called shalim. Really? It's not, but again, like a mission, it's not called shalim. Really? It's not, yeah, it's, I'll show it. It's for shalom. Yeah, yeah. That's not called shalom. Because that's why, that's why in Shabbos, we don't cut the challah. They make an attention to show a remez right. that you're supposed to cut it before. Let me cut yeah. halfway down. Why don't you cut halfway down for? It's not a shalom. It's not a But if you say, if you hold it, it's a shalom, so what's the problem? Okay. Yeah, that's why Shabbos, we don't cut it. During the week, you, t- you have a loaf of bread, you cut most of it down, you make a bracha, and then you break the rest. But Shabbos, we don't do it. It has to be full shalom. So, um, two colors are sitting there Friday right before Shabbos. Little kid comes over and breaks off one of the braids. You, you can't replace it with it. the toothpick thing, does not. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm it asking. Happens. It happens. I'm, it, it's a very common childhood. It, it does I'm asking. According to the child, say, I wonder. I wonder what the luck will be if the toothpick trick is a good trick. The more brings it down for Ruva Kateris. The child trees went down by Ruva Kateris to Shabbos, Prusa. I wonder if that's, if it, it happens a lot of times. Yeah. Nobody's concerned about the Sakana here? How about the toothpick in the middle of your collar? <laughs> it's a collar. <laughs> it's a fancy thing putting toothpicks in food. No, no, that's if you see it. Well, those are the I'm saying if you so have you it in the middle, you, you know, it's, rely it's, on that. I don't know. I'm, I'm just no, no, a piece of it. I'm not afraid of today. It's a question of mind. No, but you have to put it with the cut. You're supposed to not see the cut because of it. Why would you cut most of it? Why? Because it's the problem. It's a hefsek. You make a bracha, then you have to cut it. It's a hefsek. So you have a dilemma. What do you do? I want to make a challah. I want to make a bro- that's that's not what happens. Uh, so I have, a, have a, have a dilemma. I want to make a bracha on the shalim, but I, but uh, the problem is the hefsek. You do that. You make the moisty. You, you cut it most of before. Yeah, yeah. If you have if you have a, a bagel, yeah. if you have a, if you have a double shalim, yeah. the question is, if you have a loaf of bread, if you have a, a slice of bread, is there any milo that the crust is whole? That's a shalom. That's called a shalom or not? Some people say yeah. that's called shalom. They will first break it after the bracha. Yeah. But let's say you have a, a full a full roll. Right. You have a roll in front of you. Yeah. And during the week you want to make a bracha on it, yeah. so you won't you won't make a bracha on the whole thing and then cut it afterwards. Cut it most of the way, hold it together, make a bracha, and then break off the rest. So you go to a restaurant or someone's house and they serve you a sandwich that's already been cut in half. Yeah, that's not. It's it's, it's cut already. It's done. It's done. So yeah, it's not a shalom. But when you have a shalom, you're supposed to, you're supposed to make a bracha on a shalom. Wedding, and they have a bread, little piece of bread, by a thing you shouldn't make it on. You should cut your seat. Take take a complete thing. And make so what is this now? Now that it's cut in half already. Yeah. yeah so this. Like, before we used to have it wasn't cut. Right. <laughs> right. Right. So here it's not cut fully. You get the zayin. Right. So you should make a brach on the way. The then finish breaking it off. Okay. So these aren't broken off completely. This is like ninety percent. Yeah. yeah. But that's only during the week. Shabbos we won't do that. And Shabbos we keep it whole. Some people make that little indentation to show that it's a uh, to have some. There's still a lot more to go, but the time is up. <laughs> I didn't open all this for him yet. <laughs> I thought we had a bland topic. Not so bland. so much more, Khalil. The whole, the whole side of Mitzah from Basal is a huge sugi of... After, let's say you, you made the dough, and then you baked it, and then you take it out. So at what point does the Kamachi of Khalil? It wasn't... You didn't have enough in each dough for... Then we put them together. At what point do you have a Chi of Khalil? So, the that a yeah, so, that, so you have, this, is, this is a very common thing. Even if ladies and sons make two or three doughs, they'll make a whole wheat dough and a regular dough, that's right. Or they make two doughs in the mixer, and each dough doesn't have a shear. So what do they do? They put a towel over it. Right? What do they put a towel over it for? To warm it up. To unite it? 
No, to unite it. Yeah. They put a towel, t- so each dough doesn't have a shikh a challah. Each dough is only, let's say, three pounds in each dough. So now you have a suffering to make a brach on it. So you wouldn't make a bracha. If I take the two pounds, the two doughs together, I'll make a bracha. Now, if she doesn't want to take both of them and put them together, she has a cheshbon. You know, this is three, this makes four chalas. You have a cheshbon, how you do it? So what do you do? That's why they take a towel, they put it over it, and they make the bracha, and I take a piece of chalas, and I'll cover it. The towel on top of it is being mitzahed. You make the thing at the end, after you finish all the chalas. After you finish all the doughs. So now let's say, let's say your wife is making chalas, right? She makes dough, and she doesn't have time to make it. She'll make in the morning one dough, she'll bake it, later on she'll bake the next one, she'll make it and bake the next one. Each dough doesn't have enough for a challah. What she should do is, she should wait till the end of the day, put all the challahs together in yeah. one place, after they're baked, and take a piece of challah, make a yeah. bracha. Because if she should do it before she bakes it... You make the dough, don't they buy that in the, in the rest of the bacon? Oh, the dough? No, they make the dough. They make the dough. You can. You, you can, can buy, buy lunch. lunch <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's so, in which case, so, you have to take. No, so you have to know. Take it off. So you have to know. That just takes off. Yeah. Yeah. But if you make the the dough yourself, yeah. then if you if if you you should try to be mechayiv yourself in a bracha of chal. The way you mechayiv yourself is either put the doughs together. If you don't have the doughs, after you bake it. At least put all the chalas together in one place and make a bracha. But the volume is based on what the dough was originally. Right. Not the no, the volume is based on the, on the flour. <laughs>